Welcome back to The Exchange. Shares of Google parent Alphabet are higher today after that top and bottom light beat after the bell. Its cloud revenues were 6% above estimates and up 35% year on year. It's the first big tech name reporting this week. So is it a bellwether? Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, and Apple will hear from all of them today and tomorrow. Here for more on what to expect is Ken Gorelsky, senior internet analyst at Wells Fargo, and on set with us, Dear Jabosa. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to both of you. Ken, you can kick things off if you want to emote about uh, Alphabet or say that perhaps it's not relevant for the set we're heading into. Sure, no, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. And it absolutely is relevant. Um, Google with its size and scale is certainly a bellwether for this group, both in the overall advertising space, but also in the cloud side. And uh, what we saw like you highlighted uh, in the GCP Google Cloud uh, business really accelerated. And most importantly, it really saw a real inflection in, in margins there. Uh, overall, we also just saw some, the, I would say the core advertising performance was relatively in line, uh, but in, in but there was some really nice cost control in the quarter, which allowed them to, to beat uh, earnings expectations in the quarter. So you think it's a bellwether. Deirdre, what, what's the reaction? I of? would agree, yeah. totally a bellwether. And I think margin improvement was certainly the story. Why the margin improvement? That's where things get really interesting. On the earnings call last night, Ken, I'm sure you heard this, but Senator Pichai, he told investors that tw more than 25 percent, a quarter of all new code at Google is generated by AI. I saw that. Astonishing. You think that's where the, the I, margin help I comes from? I think that that certainly, and he says, unlocks efficiency. And wow. then they've got the new CFO in saying that she wants to do further cost controls. When you have that kind of efficiency and you're able to generate, you know, coding, which is the backbone of everything everything at Google, I think that that can really improve. And that also raises the stakes for the other hyperscalers, right? Microsoft and Amazon maybe pushes those CEOs to tell investors, too, how much they're sort of supercharging margins with that. Would that be your first question, Ken, for the rest of them? Well, well I think it's it's certainly very relevant. And, and the key is these are not your, like, not the the uh, internet companies, or the mega cap internet companies of yesteryear, which were really based, you know, they, it was adding more employees and, and more developers. Really, if you take, um, interestingly, I was, look, I was looking at this, Google uh, at the end of 22 versus the what we expect by the end of 25, employees will be basically be flat uh, from wow. over, that, over mm -hmm. that period of time. Yet, you, you're going to have CapEx up 100%. 30 billion in additional capex by our estimates, um, and revenues up 35 percent. So you can see why this this efficiency narrative and why uh, these AI tools are so important. If I had to translate it, Deirdre, for the headlines, I'd write, you know, <laughs> trillion dollar tech companies doing even better because they ha they can hire fewer workers and have AI write more code. Trillion dollar nation states, right? Because yeah. that's what they are, and they have their hands in so many different businesses. It's no longer just advertising for Google, right? We know that that's where a lot of the competition is coming in line, and it's search dominance. So what was interesting last night, too, is Waymo got a mention. That's I don't know right. that I've ever heard it mentioned on the earnings call before wow. because they're delivering 150,000 rides a week. Um, you're seeing strength, as Ken mentioned, in cloud. And again, that raises the stakes for some of the other ones that are coming down the pike. But when we talk about efficiency, who created the year of efficiency? It was Mark Zuckerberg Absolutely. and Meta. And now that's turned into years of efficiency. And that's why I think a lot of the street, and Ken, you can tell me if you agree or not, thinks that Meta might be the most exciting this earnings season. Yeah, no, I, I certainly, it, it's certainly an investor favorite, and it's been the best performer year to date, for sure. Um, and I think that there's two pieces of that. That's the continued efficiency, right? And we're a couple of years, you're, you're right, Deirdre, into this this year of efficiency, we're year three or so into efficiency, and it looks, uh, by all signs, it looks like it will continue. Um, and then add to that, uh, Meta has really been viewed as a, in an AI winner, right? Uh, in, a, in a market that's looking for return on investment for AI, Meta has been that that case, right? Where um, you've seen material acceleration in advertising, you've seen outperformance. I mean, we we calculate uh, Meta growing close to 18, 19 percent uh, on the top line uh, in an industry that's growing 12 to 13. And they're already, hmm. by our accounts, about a third of the industry. So that's really tremendous. So can you still, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, have a hold on Google? Do you change that to a buy after today? I know you raised the price target a little bit. You also have a hold on Amazon and recently put it in that position from a buy. Yes, that, that's that's right. So first I'll take Google. Um, our, our position there is, in, in, and I think 
what, what they can control, they did an amazing job in this quarter. I thought both on the margin side and, and GCP is performing very well. Our concerns on, on Google are really about the longer term uh, position of the, of the search business. And we think we see three kind of headwinds. One is regulatory. We've talked a lot. Of, uh, there's been a lot of commentary about that. Two, um, that's about kind of uh, AI uh, transition, a move to more of an answers-based approach in, in search. And three is more kind of maturity and, and share loss in some key verticals. But can that earnings call didn't ease some of those concerns? I know that's sort of the biggest question overhanging Google right now is this innovator's dilemma. Can it transition from a search-dominant world to an AI chatbot world? But you heard Sundar Pichai say last night that AI overviews are actually leading to more engagement, more usage them. of search. I think they're great. <laughs> No, I, I agree. And, and look, that's been the key question uh, in the debate in the market uh, since the since the print last night. And I, I so my my take would be this is that, yes, they're performing well, they're doing what they can. But the fact is that that uh, searches are decelerating. We saw in the, the in the 10 Q filed this morning that pay click growth was only four percent. Four percent. That's the that's the lowest growth they've had since COVID. Matches the lowest quarter. So you've seen volumes slowing. We expect search to decelerate, search revenue growth to decelerate to the high single digits by the first quarter of next year. So I think it's going to be tough for this kind of AI winner in search hmm. uh, narrative to take hold. And that might be why the shares are giving back some of their earlier gains. Is that reality is setting in a little bit of the excitement fades uh, fades it off. Ken and Deirdre, thanks. Really appreciate it. Ken Gorelsky, Deirdre Bosa joining us for Tech Check.